for Johnny, though? Because, listen, we both played alongside Johnny for a long time, but you were a big part of it, particularly back in 2018, mm. 19, and to see him taking over that captaincy. Like, you must have been proud of him and happy for him because he's a good friend off the pitch as well. Absolutely. And I think the way he's evolved as a player, you know, is, is obvious over the number of years that, that we've known him and people have watched him. But to see the way he's evolved as a captain, and a lot of it was a bit of optics, I think, at the very start, he got a bit of criticism because of his body language. But And they go, oh, players can't respond to that. But you go, well, we're used to it. And the reason that he sometimes gets very frustrated is because he sees the game quicker than anyone else. And he knows where you should be. And if you're not there, he can't understand how you haven't done it. And he's been able to go, well, actually, when you're a captain, you need to deal with people that are a bit laid back. And everything's a joke. So basically, and people... I'm sorry, I'm just saying, is this you? Yeah, so it's like, he knows where you're meant to be and when you're, they're not there. I was just going to yeah. say, is this the crossfield kick? And oh, they're like, man. he's like, Tommy, <laughs> where the hell are you? He used to get so cranky with me. Constant. <laughs> oh, listen, he used to... Yeah. Do, but I, listen, I know well, what I'm doing. Is this because you weren't? He'd do a crossfield kick, kick and you wouldn't be Oh, there. he'd throw the ball out into oh. touch because I'm meant to be yeah. on the wing, but I'm on the yeah. other wing. Or they're Tommy would call for the ball when there's three people marking him just because he hadn't touched it in 30 seconds. Yeah, well, listen, that seems about that's right. what Johnny said about me. He says, the best thing about Tommy is that he always wants the ball. The worst thing about Tommy, he always wants the ball. <laughs> he wants the ball. Um, but did, he, did you go to you for leadership? Like, did you help him in that? Because yeah. you yeah. had been there. Like, and, and that was one of the best parts of your game, is that actually you were able to manage that. Yeah, I think with, with Johnny, he sort of, you have every time you're speaking to Johnny, and this is why he's so good, he just takes things in. It's not necessarily that he comes to you for advice. Like we, like we would spend quite a bit of time together, um, certainly post my retirement. I'm trying to get him to play a bit more golf, but he doesn't have time. <laughs> He's always injured, so he doesn't get a chance to do that. But every time he speaks to you, he listens. And then he kind of, you can see him nearly working out in his head, going, well, how can that help me? Or how can I use that? But he's ultimately his own person, and he's always yeah. been a big leader within that team, yeah. whether he was captain or not. And to see the way he's responded to captaincy in this last sort of two years at Ireland have really flourished. And the fact that he stood up, mm -hmm. and he's also doing all the kicking, like he's kicking really, really well, which is hard. When mm -hmm. you're the captain and the referee gives a penalty, as a hooker, I used to go, all I want to do is go for the post so that I don't have to throw in. <laughs> and as a kicker, the he's, he's doing the opposite. He's going, I should really take responsibility for this, but the easiest thing is to go to the corner. So it's, you know, to see him stand up and kicking points and making those really clear and concise judgments is brilliant. And when you're looking at this, because I've been speaking to you about this an awful lot, an awful lot is being made of the management team and the the smiles on the faces of lads from the age of 37 to 20 years old. Like, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of talent coming through, loads of different ages. And you've, you've done management yourself, you know, mm -hmm. been involved with Fiji and all that kind of stuff. Is it the sort of thing that makes you go, God, I, I want to do what they're doing. I want to I wanna start getting involved in management more. Yeah, I think it's, it's seeing how much they love their job. And look, coaching and management is, is really difficult because you're basically working sort of six and a half days a week and then you're having to sort of spend that other half day balancing family life but to see them enjoying it so much and I think the brilliant thing about this Irish management is very much a reflection of them and Andy Farrell's balanced personalities you know if you have a team of Paul O'Connell's it's going to be far too intense but if you drop the intensity of Paul O'Connell in with say John Fogarty who is very good at what he does but he's very laid back he loves a bit of crack in the middle of it so everyone gets a bit of a balance the whole yeah. management balance you see it from different angles and and I think that's the brilliant thing about what Andy's done. He's, he's, he has created this balance whereby they train, but they also get, when they're off, they're off. It's just totally relaxed. Yeah. You don't, you're not expected to do anything because they want you to do the way you would be in a club where you train from whatever time in the morning to whatever time you finish in the afternoon. And then it's go home, relax, not go home, go back to the hotel and treat it like you're going home. Yeah. Relax and don't go. There's not meetings thrown in left, right and centre. It is. Yeah. You're they bring off, a cow up off. the room for you to go milk in the cow. Absolutely. Yeah. Be at home. Anything. Yeah, yeah.